Hello, and thank you for taking the time to join me for this talk. In this talk, I will analyse the use of the word controversial. Over the last 30 years or so, especially in the last 20 years, the use of the word controversial has grown enormously in the Western world, whereby Western politicians, Western mainstream journalists, and Western so-called experts apply the word relentlessly and unsparingly, day on day, week on week, year on year. And it is not coincidental that in the last 30 years or so, in particular the last 20 years, many freedoms in the Western world, such as the right to free speech, have become severely restricted. Accordingly, it is the case that in order to help preserve the tyranny that the Western ruling elites or globalists have established in the Western world, their useful idiots, politicians, journalists and so-called experts, have been aggressively and remorselessly describing as controversial any opinion which contradicts the official narrative in the Western world. The word controversial is subjective, and its usage is controversial in itself. So, who defines what is controversial? How is it defined? And who applies the word? Those are absolutely fundamental questions which someone must ask themselves whenever they hear or read that an opinion or an individual is described as controversial. Because, as I said, the word is purely a matter of opinion, and in today's Western world, the word has taken on a highly politicised and highly weaponised nature. By describing an individual as controversial, the powers that be in the Western world seek to lower him or her in the estimation of others. Or to put it more simply, to dirty the individual in the eyes of society. And the powers that be know that the average person in the Western world who is listening to or reading the description of another as controversial will be influenced by this because the average person in the Western world thinks neither independently nor critically and has an intrinsic trust, whether he or she is aware of this or not, in what their politicians, journalists, and so-called experts say. I have long described that trust as the mindset of a mindless slave, in which someone is happy and content to be told what to think and what to do by people in positions of influence and power. And I have long said that this is a major characteristic of the British people, and has been historically. By the average person in the Western world automatically accepting, either consciously or subconsciously, that an individual is controversial, this weakens the existence of alternative opinions, which constitutes a blow to democracy and a victory for tyranny. In essence, the average person is digging their own grave and the grave of society as a whole. To avoid the pitfalls which come with accepting the word of others that someone is controversial, one must think for themselves and question anything which is said by anyone, irrespective of who the person saying something is be it a king, or a queen, or a president, or a prime minister, or a scientist, or a charity chief executive, and so on. After all, just because something is said eloquently by someone in a position of influence and power, does not mean it is true, and nor should trust be automatically placed in a person of influence and power. Indeed, many pathological liars, psychopathic killers and paedophiles 
hold positions of influence and power. With that in mind, let us examine, in the context of the Western world, who defines what is controversial, who applies the word, and opinions which are described as controversial. Whilst Western politi politicians and Western so-called experts routinely describe as controversial individuals whose opinions run contrary to Western state ideology, the two groups are influenced by Western mainstream media as to what is controversial. Now, if you accept the premise, which is an incontrovertible truth, that Western mainstream media is neither free nor independent and is instead owned, managed and wielded as a weapon by the Western ruling elites, then it is painstakingly obvious that the word controversial is selectively used by mainstream journalists. Let us take some examples. The Western ruling elites support and impose mass immigration in the Western world. Thus, anyone who opposes mass immigration is labelled by the media as controversial. The Western ruling elites support and impose multiculturalism in the Western world. Accordingly, anyone who opposes multiculturalism is labelled by the media as controversial. The Western ruling elites despise culture and are destroying this in the Western world. So, anyone who supports the preservation of culture is labelled by the media as controversial. The Western ruling elites imposed lockdowns, social distancing, face masks and so-called COVID-19 vaccines in the Western world. Thus, anyone who opposed the COVID narrative is labelled by the media as controversial. The Western ruling elites imposed the Black Lives Matter movement in the Western world. Accordingly, anyone who opposes the Black Lives Matter movement is labelled by the media as controversial. The Western ruling elites argue that Israel has a right to do what it is currently doing against Palestinians in Gaza. So, anyone who opposes Israeli actions in Gaza is labelled as controversial. The Western ruling elites say that monuments to the Confederate States of America should be destroyed. Thus, Anyone who opposes the destruction of Southern identity in America is labelled by the media as controversial. There are many, many more examples which I could cite. And only an idiot cannot see the correlation between what Western mainstream media describes as controversial and what it does not. I will now demonstrate that correlation in a reverse way, and will do so by citing a number of examples. Firstly, Tony Blair, who is at the core of the Western ruling elites, presided over numerous wars of aggression, causing enormous loss in human life, a war criminal, no less. Yet, the media does not describe Blair as controversial. Indeed, they refer to him as Sir Tony, a title which is, incidentally, worthless. Secondly, David Cameron, who is also at the heart of the Western ruling elites, played a major role in turning Libya into a failed state, and one which is now used by immigrants to illegally enter Europe from. Yet, the media does not refer to Cameron as controversial. Instead, they refer to him as Lord Cameron, which is, again, another worthless title. Thirdly, Bill Gates, who, like Blair and Cameron, is at the heart of the Western ruling elites, is neither a scientist 
nor a medical doctor, and is therefore not an authority on any matter relating to science or medicine. Further to that, civil society, farmers groups, and human rights organizations in India have called for Gates to be arrested for his various illegal activities in the country. Yet, the media does not refer to him as controversial. Fourthly, the American and the British governments, which form the nucleus of the Western ruling elites, are allowing vast numbers of illegal immigrants, men of military age, to cross into America and Britain, respectively, on a regular basis. Hence, both governments are allowing the national security of their countries to be threatened. Yet, the media does not refer to the American and the British governments as controversial. And fifthly, all across the Western world, state institutions such as banks, police, civil service, schools and universities have embraced the claim that there are more than two genders. Yet, the media does not refer to that claim and those institutions as controversial. The word controversial has been weaponized in the Western world and is used to discredit any opinion and any person voice in this opinion which contradicts the narrative of the Western ruling elites. If your eyes are fully open, and if you do not automatically accept the word of others, then you can spot examples of politicized and weaponized use of the word controversial a mile off. So, in the case of Britain, Enoch Powell and Tony Benn are labeled by the media, along with politicians and so-called experts, as controversial because of their opinions. And bear in mind that neither Powell nor Ben caused the deaths of others. Yet, the likes of Blair and Cameron, who did cause the deaths of many civilians, are not described by the media as controversial. Blair caused the deaths of Serbs, Afghans and Iraqis, while Cameron caused the deaths of Libyans, Syrians and Yemenis. Alas, in today's Western world, holding certain opinions results in your name being smeared, while causing the deaths of human beings brings no charges whatsoever. There are, of course, other words which Western mainstream journalists, along with Western politicians and Western so-called experts, use to dirty dissenting opinions, and these include conspiracy theories, racism, far-right, and white supremacism. So, be alert to the use of the word controversial, and when you hear it or read it, ask yourself, who is using the word? Who do they work for? Who are they beholden to? And do they only use the word for opinions and those who voice these opinions, which contradict official policy in the Western world. Finally, let it be known that journalists should never, ever refer to an opinion or someone expressing an opinion as controversial. The job of a journalist is to report news, not pass judgment. Thank you for your attention.